So, here I am again. Um, last time it crashed. I'm not exactly sure why I went to go open the door and then just all of a sudden. So, I looked up a little bit and the only thing I could so far think of was re going into the redist folder in my deadly premonition folder and redoing the VCC, redoing the DirectX and also enabling um, large address aware on dp.exe. Hopefully that will fix it. I don't exactly have a second monitor set up right now to check for uh, seeing if it's hitting that 2 gig uh, limit, but maybe that's the issue. So we'll see, because I'm still interested in playing this. The initial uh, video I uploaded was just essentially for, I wanted to see what it was like, because, you know, I got it for five bucks. Um, but regardless of my complaints in the earlier video, I'm actually liking it a lot, at least so far. So, let's try this again. Previously during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Yeah, I'm just, I'm skipping past that. The, uh, recap hasn't changed. Okay, so... I just want to go get that thing... I think it was over here that I got that Agent Honor thing, actually. Yeah, okay, I already picked up this guy. Yeah, the only other thing I did that I can remember is I picked up um, some coffee. But I think I'm going to skip that, honestly. Okay, so it's up here, I think. There's also a flare. I think, but I can't remember if I picked it up before or after. Just, I'm not gonna bother. I figure it's a non issue. I'm gonna continue uh, progressing. So, well, I think it was this room, actually. Yes. And this one didn't have anything, but I think it was the previous room had. Um, it was this room. Yes. Okay. Good. So now, so I don't have to do that again, I'm gonna go save. And then I'm going to continue with the story. The draw distance is not really that bad, but as you can see at the end of this hallway, there's just a bunch of flickering going on. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Oops. Ah, well, I got 12 bucks anyway. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother with coffee, come on. Let's not crash, please. Yes, it's this. Okay, so this is mostly a blind thing, but I did see. Good morning, this Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. That somebody posted on NeoGaf. Or not this video, but this music. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then. Do you want a cracker? Thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? What the fuck is with this long table? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. 
My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Yeah, because you're Honestly, though, it's empty. been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. So she cleans My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh, my. We're Wasn't all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, yeah, I, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly. I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy yes, here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. This guy Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called really? Greenvale. Oh my God. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. Hmm. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The a and Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, huh. I better start yeah, cleaning up. You sure. just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though, I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. What is with... What is he doing? Milk. It's not coffee, it's milk. Uh... What is his coffee gonna tell him now? Did you see that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. 
decay oh. in the coffee. I knew oh, okay. I could count on it. it. Never fails. Now then, Ugh. let's get going. How is he saying that while drinking his coffee? I'm not sure what that was supposed to symbolize, that sound. Yes. with the audio thing. Huh. Interesting. There's always trouble heading my way in this job. But I'm always up for a little excitement, too. There's no theme park in this town, though. All that good luck is just slipping away. But I think I'll have a thrilling enough time right here anyway. Hmm. Three is generally not a lucky number, though. So, my lucky number is three today. The first case I worked after joining the FBI had three victims. I don't understand what this is doing. Like, the point. An unpredictable life is a wonderful thing. Cases may come flooding in like passengers at rush hour. So is he ordering a new coffee every time, or...? White, is it? The hair of one of my co-workers turned completely white overnight due to stress once. Relaxing might be a good idea. Eh, this will be the last time I'll do that one. Yeah. <laughs> My liver is a healthy pink. I wonder if drinking too much coffee would upset it. Drinking coffee is part of the investigation, after all. <laughs> what? I did hear that drinking coffee will actually help your liver in terms of... Um, say, like, if it's got minor liver damage or something like that. From drinking too much. I am going to go save my game, wherever that is. Oh, it's over here. Just in case. This game is crash laden, apparently. No bonus, though. What is up here? Nostalgic of... Nostalgic of what?
don't think it works like that. I'm not really sure about these leaps of logic work. Okay. Likely. You know, I think so. That seems... Extra for checking weather? Those are expensive cigarettes, holy shit. Uh, see, I'm not gonna buy that yet, because I don't know if I get a free one later. observe any of these. No, I'm going that way. Uh, I'm gonna save again because I'm really kind of nervous. Observe these now. Police car. <laughs> Never seen one of those before. Just, so we just have King out, George okay, okay. to thank for preparing okay. a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. Driving in this game is terrible. Holy I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply out. amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. Boost. Break.
Got another player. Is there any way to. There we go. That's more like it. Let's see if there's any shit back here. It doesn't look like there's any collectibles. Zack, is there something here that you want to check out? We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office, but if you want to act on a hunch, then I'm with you. So, is Zack me? <laughs> Peeping Tom. Is there an achievement for this? A load screen just for that. I'd imagine that the next window would be the same situation. Oh. Red. I do like these hidden collectibles. I feel like that would be a waste of time. Can't go more that way. Also, it's kind of interesting. I'm just gonna take a screenshot. See, now I'm really nervous that this is gonna crash the game. So, there's a thing there, but I can't get to it because the door's locked. Maybe, maybe it will be unlocked later? By the way, that uh, climbing down was all automatic. I didn't have to do anything. I wonder if I can go around instead of breaking it. Nope. Oh. 
We're on beat. Wow, that's... I think something's wrong with the FPS here. Because that's... Can I drive a boat? Oh, damn it. No walking on the grass. What does that mean? That there's an entry point? I guess it just means I can peek in the window. That was pointless. Potato. Well, I guess that's all there is to do over here. But I'm not interested in going into this building. Maybe later. Oh, yes! I wonder if this stuff is even used for anything. I don't... Of course, now I'm lost. Here. There we go. I think... Yeah, that thing just moved. Awesome. My car is missing. I bet it's all the way back. Yeah, the car is gone. I just have to pick up one of these, apparently. God, wow. This car. What the fuck? So, Zach, about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays. You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there, just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. So apparently I was supposed to do a turn off here. Mm. There's a card thing here. Yeah, I'll just take the next left and go pick up this card. So, so, driving this car is pretty finicky, and it's pretty shitty, but you don't push forward on the control stick or anything, it's just pull down RV, and then 
moves left to right. This was limited apparently to 50 miles an hour. Uh. Oh, it's a tunnel. Wait, is this where I. This is not where I want to go? Oh, God. just be an issue with my frames per second. So, next left. Apparently I can check somebody's mailbox. Hay horses. Graphic pop in. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still, it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth? I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. You know the monster in- hmm? Oh, whoops. Zach, we'll finish our chat later. Let's take a walk around oh, here. So the dog's not going to attack me. So by doing this, do I get a card? White Spruce Farm. So, turn around, go on Manifest Street. So, and take a left, take a right, take a left, take a left. Picking up from where we left off, speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth? I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? 
but I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward, and I say, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell. Trading card. That's a bunch of money. Nice. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, hold on a second. Just gonna do something real quick.
All right, back in business. Building for such a small town. And here we the exterior work. woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Is he sleeping? Standing up? Uh, uh... What? Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. Who animated this shit? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent, Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, so that's Thomas. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. <laughs> what? I just... Well, I want to help do everything I can so to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but <sighs> I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me know when things are ready. Flying around somewhere. Zach, Thomas like appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. Apparently so. Oh. Kind of concerned about all this gray here. <laughs> okay. Zach, look at this. Oh, now this is something special. I can't see it's the epitome of the old Frontier Sheriff's Office. Uh, it's perfect. Okay. A stuffed deer's head on the wall. A flag, a hunting rifle. A hunting rifle. Amazing. You'd never see a hunting rifle on the wall of a police department in the city. It's just amazing. Wonder if the sheriff would ever let me shoot Why it. Why is that the first thing you think of? I'm telling you, dude, this guy is psychotic. Uh, um, George, do you work out every day? Uh, of course, Agent Morgan. Exercise keeps me healthy. I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Oh, that's, oh, that's impressive. Team, you know, quarterback. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since... Yesterday, Arnold. What is York doing? He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him too. If you see Arnold around, let me know, will ya? Can't finish my workout menu without him. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Hey, 
Hey girl, hey. He's <clears throat> such a creeper. Hi. So before I do anything, I'm going to save simply because I feel like it's a good idea. Ah! It's not what I wanted. Apparently it makes sense, I suppose. Conference room? No. Obviously you can't open that door. Can't open this one, though. Also, I just started off. Why is that quest number four? <laughs> All right. Damn it. I can't go into the last bit. What is this guy? <laughs> Probably. peek inside the door to make sure everything's okay. Gray squirrel key is okay, so that's not what I want. Ah, oh, yes! Oh, is it a... Oh, it's a trading card. Oh, there it is. Zack, we've found <laughs> Arnold. Let's get him back to George. I guess it's a cute name for a dumbbell. Staring intently. I'm gonna come back and get the keys. For the obvious reason that I don't want it to start some sort of a cutscene. George, I found Arnold. Really? He was a bit hard-headed, <laughs> but I got him to come back. Uh. Oh, <laughs> Arnold. Exactly well done, Agent Morgan. Now I can work out using my normal workout menu. Good to hear that. Huh? Here's a little something to show you my appreciation. So that makes us even. I don't owe you anything, and you don't owe me anything. No changes to how we work together. Just bear that in mind. Zack? He needs some friends who aren't so dumb. <laughs> oh, Chivo. Man, I'm starting to roll in dough. Okay, so. Well, I can go that way. There's the kitchen room, which I already went to. It's a lock room. Also, mildly curious, I wonder what happens if I hit anybody with my weapon.
nothing in it. He's, he walks so stiff. So, I already went down that way. Storage, see if there's anything interesting up here. There's nothing here. So it's not where I would go. Shooting range. What do I get for finding all these keys and where do they go? It's probably also something else for the um, shooting range, probably like an achievement or something, but I don't really care. Let's sleep in a jail bed. Is there anything in these even? Oh, yes. Can he, like, run into the door and bust it open? I'm not gonna open that door. I feel like that would be a bad idea. Oh, okay. Other key. Is it in here? Is it over here? No. What's going on in there? Is it in the locker? I think I did everything so far. Now, save. what happens.
Okay, so... You found the key. I think so. Is this it? Ah, uh, you don't know your squirrels, do you? This isn't the right key holder. This is a Siberian flying squirrel. Uh... It's closer to a land-based squirrel. The Siberian flying squirrel is larger than the southern flying squirrel and has a standing tail while the southern has a hanging tail. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. You sure do know a lot about squirrels. The southern one is the one I'm supposed to give him. Let's not give him. <clears throat> what this one? You found the key. I hope this is the right one. Uh, you found a Siberian chipmunk this time, have you? Sorry, wrong key. A Siberian chipmunk? This species lives in northern Japan on the it's island kind of, of Hokkaido. Actually. They're actually quite a popular pet. <coughs> so it isn't even a squirrel. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. found the key. Is this the one you were looking for? <laughs> Obscure it with her fingers. Uh, no. This is a gray squirrel. Sorry, that's not the key. Nothing particularly special about the gray squirrel, I'm afraid. You can find them in the US, Canada, and in England, too. A gray squirrel. What was I thinking? <laughs> But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Southern. How am I supposed to discern which of the two left are that? This one? Oh. You found the key. That's the right one? Oh, okay. Well, there goes the other one. Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. So what do I do with the remaining key? The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. Is anybody ever going to comment on his talking to himself? City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. 
This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually, I, well, I, I baked them myself. Let's get married, Tom. That's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Uh, oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping uh, you won't slow us down. Okay. I don't really get the point of this if it's just gonna say clear. Might as well buy that fishing rod, I suppose. If I'm gonna be making this much money. uses the actual proper usage of an apostrophe. That's awesome. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. You can look at a map. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Just use my phone GPS. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. Not that exactly. means you don't have to learn your way around town. He's FBI. It means he has jurisdiction over you. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Episode one. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? Right. We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. <laughs> Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face. Just like yours, right? George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. <laughs> Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. So, Emily, tell me. Is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. 
Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the Sheriff of Greenvale. Zack, there he is. The Monarch, in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No. No, nothing, George. So they do comment on... I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. That's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. That's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Sheriff. Oh. Uh, some kind of food, I guess. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Uh, Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet really? you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. How did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that scar in your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. 
a peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime, the murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. Like but everyone name. feels the seditious, heinous evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, well, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. Too low res for me to really tell what the hell anything is. You figure correctly. Hospital. Okay, so there's nothing hidden in the bathroom, I guess. Drink from the water fountain? Oh, okay. Well, I think I'm gonna save for right now. Come back to this later. So, because I'm kind of tired and I wanna go do something else. So, uh, if you liked seeing this sort of like a first blind playthrough, let me know. And I will upload some more of it. I will likely probably still record some stuff um, 
just uh, for future uh, uploading or whatever, in case anybody's interested. Uh, hopefully it comes out alright on the upload, and yeah, I will save and... I will see you next time.